Welcome back to A2 Audio. Today on the channel, I've got another Pioneer SX780. I know what you're thinking. Mike, you just did a Pioneer SX780 video, so why are you doing another one? Well, that other one, you know, we fixed that problem pr pretty quickly. And so I like to point out all the different problems that I run across because I think it's a learning opportunity. It's, I think it's super frustrating when you go to YouTube, right, and you've got a problem with your stereo and then all the videos that you watch are pro other problems that may not apply to your stereo. So I'm going to try to show uh, different variating problems that I find in stereos. And this one actually had a quite a bit uh, wrong with it. And so usually, you know, when you start working on a, re a receiver, you know, it might be one problem and you fix that problem and things uh, get better. But this one had multiple issues, multiple failures. And so I kind of want to walk you guys through how I fix this receiver. Um, how much time it took to, to fix this receiver and kind of walk you through what my thought process was on it. And so what I'll do is I'll bring you guys into the receiver so I can kind of show you the components and talk about uh, how I fixed it. Now, but before we get started there, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit your notification bell and like this video. That gets us out to more people and helps us with the YouTube uh, algorithm. And so uh, if you can do that, let's go ahead and do that. But without further ado, come on in closer and let's get to work. All right, so I've got the receiver on its side so you guys can get a good view of inside the unit. Now, this unit was sent to me by one of my subscribers and watchers, uh, Tom. So thanks, Tom, for trusting me to fix this receiver. And he didn't really give me much to go on other than it stopped working. And so I was hoping when I opened this up that it would be a quick fix. And so what I did is I uh, went ahead and like I showed you on the other video, and let me turn it around. I disconnected, let me see if y'all can see that, disconnected the power packs and I went ahead and put my 1K uh, resistors across uh, 1 and 3 and 8 and 0 on both sides and uh, tested it that way. And so when I initially powered it up, I wasn't getting any shorts or any uh, bright lights on my dim bulb tester. So I was kind of thinking, well, maybe it's not the power packs. Maybe there's something uh, wrong in the circuit. So when I did that, uh, both sides were pretty much the same. Um, they weren't right, but the circuit, the voltages on each side was the same. And so when I initially first saw that, I said, well, if they're both the same, it must be a common problem that goes into this uh, prior to the circuit, you know, the pre-driver circuit or anything. So then I thought, I kind of ruled out that circuit leading up into this. And that would actually turn out to be a, a mistake in my logic, I think. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why, but it was really just coincidental and dumb luck. But so initially I didn't start looking into this circuit. And so what I did start looking to was the protection circuit. And so let me turn it back around and we'll talk about that. And so let's zoom in a little bit. I want to make sure you guys get a good view of the components I'll be talking about. All right, so when I talk about the protection circuit, on this receiver, we've got a couple things going on. We've got this transistor here, this capacitor, this uh, IC chip PA3004, uh, and these up here that kind of in the protection circuit, and obviously the relay. And so when I first started looking at the voltages there, I was not getting the correct voltages uh, on those, on the pins of the PA3004. And so I looked at the voltages on my regulator transistors, and those voltages all looked very good. So I knew it wasn't anything in the immediate power supply section, supply and voltage. So I really started to narrow in here. And so <clears throat> once I did that, I started kind of pulling out components. And so what I thought was really weird is that if you remember that previous video on the SX780, this capacitor was dead and I'd never seen that before. But lo and behold, when I pulled this capacitor out in the circuit, it was the same thing. It was dead as a doornail. It was reading as a faulty component, wasn't reading as a capacitor or anything. And so I was like, what are the chances of those two? And I went back and pulled the uh, capacitor from the other one and it's actually the same manufacturer. So I don't know, I, I don't know. It was a ChemCon. So I mean, I don't know if it was just dumb luck. I've never seen that problem before, but so I thought once I changed that capacitor, since it was dead and it's part of this protection circuit, that 
with the power packs disconnected and the resistors on there that it would go and I'd get relay click. So I changed that out and I changed this transistor at the same time. And you know what? No relay click. Check the voltages. The voltages haven't changed. And so I was getting, I was not, so on pin eight, you're supposed to be having 7.4 volts. I was not getting that. And then pin uh, three, you're supposed to have 0 0.9 volts on this IC chip. And I wasn't getting that either. So I was really trying to look and see what was connected to those pins to see why I was not getting the correct voltages. And so from there, I went ahead and just changed out the capacitors and the power supply section and uh, just for good measure. You know, and I, I didn't expect that to do anything, but it didn't do anything. So then I looked at what else was on this circuit. And so we have a resistor here and a, Z, or a, a diode here, a switching diode. So when I pulled this resistor out, it was testing bad. It was testing at one time it tested as an inductor. On another tester of mine, it just tested as a faulty component. Either case, it was not testing as a resistor. And so that was in the circuit, so I changed that. And I was like, all right, that's got to be it. Plugged it back in on my dim bulb tester. Still no relay click, no changes in voltages. So then I pulled this uh, diode out, and I've seen that go bad before. It was in the circuit, pulled it out. It tested fine, but I've had diodes like these test fine before, but then... Uh, they're they're actually they're actually bad so i just went ahead i said well i've got it out it's a cheap component i think i paid you know i think those you can buy those for five or ten cents i don't know so i went ahead and replaced that as well you know still no glory no relay click now keep in mind this is probably a good hour or two hours into this already you know as far as time time wise so from there i was starting to get frustrated i was i wasn't i didn't want to just continue to change components you know, and hope that I got the right one. And so, like I said, I'm a couple hours into this process by this time. So I'm checking voltages uh, everywhere. I'm checking back and forth on the inside circuitry and I just cannot figure out what's going on. So then there's some resistors down here that's part of that protection circuit. Uh, some resistors up here that's part of that protection circuit. These resistors coming off some of the regulator transistors that go into the protection circuit. So, I mean, I was pulling out every single one of these resistors and te checking them and they were all good. No problems there. Uh, and just a note on this resistor here next to the PA3004 uh, IC, the, the schematic actually calls for a 620 ohm uh, resistor, but this resistor I pulled out was actually a 320, uh, or I'm sorry, 300 ohm resistor, I believe. And so I, I was kind of wondering if that might be it. So then I changed it to what the schematic said and still no, no uh, change. Uh, then I wound up looking at one of my other 780s that I had in the shop and it was a 300 ohm resistor there. So I just swapped it back to a 300 ohm resistor and no glory. So I'm kind of at this point, I'm getting frustrated because I thought this was going to be an easy fix, uh, take minimal time because I am doing a full restore on this, but it had turned into uh, by the time that I'd got it working, I probably got five hours into it. So after I'd done all that, I've been checking voltages, double checking everything. I thought I might have a cold solder joint. And, and so I just reflowed the solder and all these uh, transistors. I started looking where I should have probably looked sooner. And that was the emitter uh, resistors. And as soon as I did that, uh, I got two emitter resistors that tested bad. So let me zoom back out. And so the emitter resistors uh, are kind of look like this in this, uh, in this receiver. And so there's two on each channel, on the left and right channel. And I had, ironically, one in each channel on the same side that was burnout, was done. Flawed, bad component. And because of that, both sides, the left and right channel voltages were the same. And so that's what initially threw me off as far as thinking it might be something in that circuit. So as soon as I replaced those, uh, I got relay click and then my voltages came right in line. And so if you're thinking, if you put on that 1K resistor on the back uh, where the uh, Darlington power packs are on terminals one and three and eight and zero, what you should be looking for on the, uh, for as far as voltages on pin one and zero is negative 0.8 to negative seven-ish to positive 6.8 to seven-ish. And that means that that was when everything in the circuit is aligned and correct and there's no other issues. And as soon as I changed those out, that's what I was getting. It was right on the, right on the money. 
And so got relay click, everything was working. And so then I decided I'd remove the resistors across the power packs terminals and I put in the new power packs. And as soon as I did that, I got relay click, no shorts, no issues, voltages all look good. And so then I decided to go ahead and hook up a set of speakers and put some music through it. And uh, I was getting obviously some scratchy, so I uh, sprayed some uh, cleaner and some of the controls. And now this thing's playing music really good. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys the rundown of like how I fixed this receiver. Because even though I've worked on a whole bunch of these receivers, every single time it could be something different. And every single time it could be just one resistor. And you know, and that's, you see how the many resistors you got on here. So whatever happened to this receiver, it's kind of interesting because we had multiple failures. We had, oh, and so both power packs were bad too. So something catastrophic happened in this receiver because we had both power packs uh, were bad. We had an emitter resistor on both channels that were bad. And then we also had this resistor uh, in the protection circuit that was bad. And then the capacitors. Now the capacitors being bad was probably unrelated. Maybe it's related, I don't know. But because we had multiple failures, you know, it just made it that much harder to troubleshoot because usually, you know, you find one problem, you fix that problem, and then that's it. But when you had multiple problems throughout the circuit board, that just makes it a lot more complicated and a lot more time consuming to chase down all the problems. But Tom should be happy now. We've got his receiver working. We've still got to replace a couple of transistors here and then also on the tuner board, uh, do a thorough cleaning on the controls, change out the light bulbs, and then this unit is going to be ready to rock and roll. So I know this video uh, was about me uh, mostly just talking through the circuit, but I, I'd like to give you guys that insight because this might be you, you know, if you have one of these and you're trying to fix it yourself. And like I said, it's frustrating when you go to YouTube and you only see one or two examples of like a common problem in these units and you don't see stuff that's kind of more uh, nuanced or whatnot. And so sometimes you just have to get in here and really just check components, you know, and it's not the glorious job I think some people think it is, you know, and just plug and chug and, and chase it on the circuit and test voltages. And so I think one thing I didn't follow my own advice on when I fixed these 780s is checking the emitter resistors, uh, resistors first. And so it's part of my flow chart that I usually do because I was convinced it was something to do, and it was in the protection circuit, but it was multiple problems. And so because of that, I didn't immediately go and check those. And that might have saved me some time if I would have just done that automatically because I wound up checking probably 10 or 15 resistors in, in this uh, circuit anyways. So I really hope someone finds this useful and can benefit from uh, me taking the time to go through this. Because honestly, guys, when you come in here, you really should think about the game plan and not be plugging and chugging. This unit, I didn't want to just replace everything and hope I got it, you know. I wanted to really make sure that I fixed every, uh, uh, addressed every problem that I found. And so now I'm confident that I've done that and I've addressed, you know, we wanted up changing one, two, three, four, we had six components failing here. We had two emitter resistors, two power packs, a uh, capacitor that was dud, and then this resistor as well. So I usually don't see that many component failures uh, when I think work on something. So to have six separate components fail, it's kind of unusual. So something, something happened. I don't know if it was a lightning strike or something, voltage swing, or maybe we crossed the speaker wires in the back. I have no idea. But uh, I know it's working now and it's going to work good. So hopefully uh, you found this video useful. If you did, please make sure to comment down in the video uh, below. Make sure to give me a thumbs up and then uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.